Hello and welcome back to Google Bear Apps. I'm Martin and welcome back to another 10th edition video. Today I'm going to be going over how objectives work in Warhammer 40k 10th edition and why these and you now need these. So let's take a look at how they work. Okay, so objective markers in Warhammer 40k 10th edition. So if you've been playing knife edition, you've probably been using these objective markers. They're mouse mapped. So in knife edition, to hold this objective, all you'd need to do is have your models on it, like such. And whoever had the most models regarding objectives secure or not would hold that objective. It's a bit different in 10th edition. So in 10th edition, instead of objective secure, which is now gone. It just goes down to whoever has the most objective control models on it. So, for example, on your data sheets for your models, there'll be an, on the top bracket, there'll be something called OC. OC is objective control. And I'll have a number on it. So, for example, Tyranids are OC2, which means each model counts as two towards controlling an objective. Same with the orcs. So let's put, say, four orcs on here. So each of these are on the objective and they have OC2. So six on the tyrannids compared to two each for the orcs, which is eight. So the orcs would actually control the objective in this situation now. Um, but one of the main changes in, in 10th edition is the center of the ejector marker. So when people use these, the ejector marker is actually only this big in the middle. What you do is this around the edges is being within three inches of the objective, which is where you need to be to control it. You use these because it's very easy to visualize who's on the objective without getting you take much out all the time. But in 10th edition, this center ejector marker you can never finish your move on. So that's movement and charges. So you can never, let me see, cover the ejector marker. Like such. For example, in Life Edition, in Pale Knight, you could probably just sit on that whole objective and cover it, and you would be able to get to it. So now, while you can still move across this objective in the movement phase, you cannot just finish your move there. Okay? So let's do some examples here. So we'll put our orcs back on here, like such. So currently orcs have loads of models on it. They're holding an objective, because each one counts as two. We've got 10 there. So you've got 20 objectives to control to the Tyrant 6. So Tyrant, in their movement phase, come in like such. Say we shoot some orcs off, so let's kill four. And then we go to the charge phase. So in the charge phase, the tyrants would roll their charge. So you roll two dice, and we've got a nine. Big difference in 10th edition is when you make your charge roll, if a model can face a model, it has to. So in 9th edition, you could go wherever you wanted, basically. You could go, well, I'm going to move this guy here, not touching. This guy's going to come around here, and this guy's going to come around here. And then when you activate it, you can then do your power wins, for example. In 10th edition, I rolled a 9. So each model, because it has to face, if it can, go like this, and face three models. But what I can't do here is there's objective. So I can't come in on top and face and sit on that objective marker. That does not allow me to do that. So I'd have to come to one side and face the model here. 
So nothing's finishing that move or the charge move on that objective. Just imagine that is literally a solid to infinity high. You see, okay. Now in fight phase, models that are in base to base contact and models that are in base to base contact with them are the only ones that are able to fight. So example here, let's put some more models back just for some examples. So for the orcs fighting back, we have one, two, three, four models based, and have two models facing the models that have based the tyrannids. So only those five, those six models would be able to make their attacks. These guys are not within range to make their attacks back. Okay. So let's say the tyrannids killed three more orcs, four more orcs off. And orcs kill a tyrant. So in the nids turn, they'd have objective two, objective two. So they have four on our objective currently. So the orcs one, two, three, four, five, six. And each are two, so twelve. So twelve to four. So the orcs still hold our objective. We'd then go in to the orcs turn, and in the command phase, if a unit is Oh, actually, we need to lose a few more models here. So let's take out two more. Sorry. Um, so we've got two, 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 two. So eight orcs count to your tyrants four. So the orcs are still hold adjective. you would go into the orcs turn. Now, because that unit is under half strength now, that unit would need to take a battle shock test. So how you do battle shock is... On your data sheets, you'll have uh, leadership. So orcs are, say, leadership seven, for example. So what I need to do, because they're under half strength, I get two dice. I need to get higher than seven. So I did. So they still it passed, which is fine. So then that end of command phase, I'd score that objective with the orcs because I'll be holding it. Okay. Um. If I failed that battle shock test like that, so I didn't beat my leadership of seven, which means the orcs are then battle shocked, which means they lose the objective control. So they become objective control zero, which then means in a command phase at the end of it, when you score for holding objectives, the tyrannids now hold that objective over me because they have objective four compared to my objective zero now because I'm battle shocked. The Tyranids, they only lost one model, so they're not under half strength. So they don't need to do battle shock. The only way they do is if I lost one more. So one model left out of three means they're under half strength. So again, the Nids would have to do a battle shock as well. So I'll just take all this back off. So battle shock is a thing in tradition. So main things is you can move across the objective marker. You just cannot finish a move or a charge move on your hair at all. Does mean you can abuse this a little bit. So example, we had a character here and then other units around this character. Like such. And then we've got the nasty nids coming in. So say for example, these nids want to charge this character here. They can charge through this objective, but you can't actually finish a charge move anywhere. So you essentially block that character out by using this objective. The only way you time to do it would have to charge the side units, which is quite good. And then in 10th edition for objective scoring, instead of holding holding one for four, two for eight, example like that, each objective now scores you five points. So you hold one for five, two for ten, more for fifteen, for example. 
and your primary maxes at 50 points instead of 45. Um, the one last example with ejector markers. So if we say we put this ejector marker over here, and say we had a fight over here, and we've got a orc unit here. So, Hollanders come in, no time, they kill all his nids off. After they finish fighting, you then do your consolidation. With your consolidation now, you can only consolidate with your three inches still, if that finishes you in engagement range, base to base of the opponent unit, or you go towards the closest objective marker. So here, I'm more than three inches away, so I can't actually finish in engagement range. So the only way these guys could consolidate would be three inches towards the process objective marker. They do not have to finish the move on, to, on it. So you can only pull in towards the process enemy unit if you can reach engagement, which is base to base. Okay. So objectives are playing a lot differently in 10th edition compared to 9th. Um, not sure how I think about it myself. Does mean I need to draw little circles around all my nice objective markers. It is what it is. Um, yeah, hopefully this demonstration has helped you understand it a little bit more. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below in the video. Also check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all the goodness. And make sure you come, keep coming back and checking out our 40k content for temptation. But until next time, cheers and go on.